Hello again and welcome to week 8 of my program. So today I thought I would cover Pete Mondrian, which was a very famous abstract artist. He did a lot of paintings, sort of like these, very similar to the style of another artist named Frank Lloyd Wright, which did a lot of um, stained glass paintings like these. Um, and today I thought we would cover Mondrian's art that was all sort of squares put together on a white background. Usually just, he, he usually just used the colors red, yellow, and blue, which are the primary colors, and then black lines with a white background. And so I thought we would do something like that today, and this is what I ended up creating. Those yellows look kind of green on camera, but they're bright yellow. <laughs> so Mondrian was very famous for having those bright, vivid colors you can see in his paintings. And I thought instead of using paint, it might be easier to use paper, so that you can create sort of the same bright style that he did, but in a more simpler way. If you don't have paper uh, in these colors, you can use paint, obviously, or you can use Sharpies or markers or crayons or really anything. So the way I did this was I started off with a piece of cardstock paper, or you can use just printer paper, any kind that's going to be strong enough to hold glued down paper onto it. Or if you're using paint, any kind that's going to be strong enough to hold paint to it. So what I did was I grabbed a ruler and I made lines in black marker all around the paper in order to create squares and rectangles all around the page. And I made sure to create a lot of these in a different shapes and sizes. Then what I did was I marked out on each square that I wanted to be colored I marked out with a sharpie what color I wanted that square to be. Um, I only did four or five of each color, and I made sure to spread them out. So as you can see on the final one here, I have a little cluster over here, but I make sure to have some white ones over here as well, um, just to make sure that it looks balanced. And you can probably also tell I don't have any of the same color right next to each other. I think that would probably look fine if you did end up doing that, but that's just a choice I decided to make so that the pattern doesn't look repetitive. And so I just went through and wrote an R for red, a Y for yellow, and a B for blue. Once I had marked out all of the squares, I decided to start with the paper. And then what I did was I took the colored paper and marked out the size of the square I was going to cut out, and I took a ruler and I created the exact same size onto the paper, cut it out, and then I uh, did that for each of the squares. And then once I was done with that, I had all of the squares set aside, and I started to glue each of them onto the actual paper in the same arrangement that I had decided on before. Now, I didn't run into this problem, but this is something I thought about. So if you end up overestimating how big your square is going to be, and it covers the black line, um, you can just take your marker and just go back over that edge just to make sure that the lines look uniform like before. Just make sure to have fun with this. Um, you could actually do this on a bigger scale. I was thinking about possibly doing it on like a poster size piece of paper, um, which I think could look really cool if you decided to do something like that. But that would be harder, so just keep that in mind. Another problem you may run into is always make sure to put all of the papers in the order that you're going to put them onto the page. So what I did was as I cut them out, I would just cut them out to the size of the square and set them to the side and create the same pattern on the side of my desk right here. And then I just laid them on top one by one in the same pattern. That way I knew where they went and I didn't get confused. Other than that, um, I hope you try this out. It's a pretty simple project that I think you can enjoy. And I'll see you next week for the last week of my program.